video, I will be talking about the capital gains calculation methods. There's a few of them here. And I'll go through each one and I'll explain how everything is calculated and what to look out for. To begin, let's start with the extension. We we'll go stock profit, capital gains. And we have a few different options here, which I'll go through quickly. The auto fill will automatically populate these fields. So for example, in the first in first out method, we have the earliest date first and the last date last. If we go to fill, it will pick the earliest date and the same with the buy dates, the earliest buy dates 2004, November, and then December 2004. To reset, we click on reset. To select the second method, which is last and first out, let's see what happens. Click on fill, and it comes up with the most recent, which is ANZ. Now ANZ is an example transaction and I put it in here just to show that it is a break-even transaction which I'll explain a bit about that later on. The next method is the highest profit first. So let's click on fill. Okay, the highest profit first method will come up with the stocks that have their highest profit. They can be either capital gain discount stocks or non-capital gain discount stocks. The next method is the biggest loss first. Now, this is an interesting example. Let's close the sidebar. As you can see, the biggest loss here is 4,235, followed by 2,434. And then there's a couple blanks. And the last option is 269. The reason why there's a couple blanks is because the calculator ignores reserved units. Now the best way for me to explain this is if I go to transactions and I have here a sale transaction for 674 units. So 674 units need to be reserved for this sale transaction. If I sell them with this transaction then this transaction here won't have any units to sell. So if I add the total of these two units, it will come up exactly 674. So if we go to profit and loss, I can include these two transactions, but the calculator will mark them as zero because there are no available units to sell. Now, if I put these as uh, nothing, so let's put these as nothing, then these get populated. Bring up the extension one more time. Let's reset the values and let's go to the capital gains with the highest profit first. So let's go here. So these are all the transactions with the capital gains discount. And if I select this one here, it also appears, but because it has zero units available, so it marks it as zero. So if I put this 
and I mark this one as none, you'll see this figure changes, which will be less than this figure here, which is 2,824. Let's reset this. The next option is capital gain discount trades with the lowest profit first. So let's fill this up. This has brought up ABP shares with the lowest profit first. Let me close this sidebar and I can go through and explain how everything is calculated here. So the lowest profit first, we see here it starts with 70, 314, 555. 1,922 and then it drops down to 873 and you might wonder why 873 is not in front of 1,922 and the reason is because this figure here is actually a higher profit than this one. The only reason why it doesn't come up as a higher profit is because the available units are zero. So if we go to none, we can see there's 840 units. However, we have 6,637 units to use. Now, if we put all these to none, we can see the actual profit is 3,987 which is much higher than the other figures. Let's bring the extension again, capital gains. Let's reset everything. So we can also do non-capital gain discount trades with highest profit first. As we can see here, there is only one transaction for non-capital gain discount trade of $30. And if we scroll across, we can see that it was held for 201 days. And according to the rule, capital discount rule, it needs to be held for 12 months. Okay, let's reset this again. And the last option is non-capital discount trades with the lowest profit first. And again, I think the same answer will come up as there was only one transaction.